In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the Harrop e-lockers. Now, in particular, I'm going to give you a couple of tips that you need to know if you're running these lockers. And um, if you're looking at buying them, I'm going to get, talk to you about a particular characteristic they have and my thoughts on that. And they have a particular Achilles heel or problem that I've found with the Harrop e-locker. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how I've solved that problem. It's quite easy to do, but you do need to have access to somebody who can do some reasonable level TIG welding. All right, so I'm going to show you all of that in this video. You're going to learn a heap and you're going to come out knowing a whole heap more about the Harrop e-locker. I want to start, say at this point though, do I rate these lockers? Yes, I do. Are they good? Yes, they are. They've been running in the Bundera for about four years thereabouts, and I use them a lot. I probably use them as, as much as, if not more than many other people, to be honest. So I really do think I've got something to say about these lockers. Would I buy them and install, install them in a four-wheel drive? With the information that I'm giving you now, the answer is yes, I would. Are they up there with the other lockers on the market, like the ARB Air lockers and the TJM Pro lockers? Yes, they are. They All lockers have some sort of issues, but I reckon with these tips I'm gonna give you, this locker can come up there right at the top end of the, of the thing. Now, is Harrop involved in me making this video? No, I don't think they'd like me to make this video because I'm gonna be very straight and very honest about it. Um, I have approached Harrop in the past about some of my thoughts and input. They don't seem to be particularly interested in what I have to say, but that's okay. The door's always open. I'm not here to try and cause trouble for anybody like Harrop. I want to help you guys, the wheelers, wheel well. So if Harrop wants to come and have a chat to me about what I've said in this video, the door's open, send me an email. I'm easy to get in touch with. I just want to help you guys build the best product that you can. All right. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button as well and then hit the bell, you get all those notifications and let me know what you think about Harrop e-lockers. Are they the go or do you think, you know, much prefer the ARB, the TJM Pro lockers or some other form of locker? Maybe you prefer the automatic locking differentials as well. I don't know, but I'd love to know what you think. All right, guys, I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll get into it. Right, I thought I'd just show you quickly some of the other vehicles in my fleet and how they're locked. So this is my 105 Series Land Cruiser. ARB locker, ARB locker. This is my son's 80 Series. Now, some of you may recognize this is the Cobit 80. This is currently running old differentials from one of my, pre my previous 80 Series. ARB air locker in the back, very, very early version, made in about 1995. It does leak a bit now because we can't get spare parts for it, but it still engages. A e-locker in the front of that, never been touched, installed it, and it just works, and it's still working to this day. Then we whiz over here to my race car. Um, so this is currently got ARB air locker in the rear, never been touched after it was installed and rebuilt by the guy I bought the vehicle off. And a TJM Pro locker in the front there. And it's uh, second hand, I got hold of it, um, second hand for a good price, stuck it in out there at Cliffhanger when we were racing. And it's still in the car now, but I, I'm about to do a diff ratio change. Hopefully I'm gonna be using nitro gears and uh, changing diff ratios. And um, I'll be um, most likely installing that TJM Pro locker back in the front. So I've got th the three lockers that are most common for selectable lockers in my fleet and not other than the TJM Pro Locker multiple versions of them so um, I think I've got something reasonable to say about all of these different products. So this is where I have my locker switches mounted I find this to be a really accessible little spot so rear locker front locker um, there they are both on off and uh, they're totally separate. So I can have rear only or front only, whatever I want. And I do use those features quite a bit. It's really important with the Harrop e-lockers that you make sure that the oil is kept regular and up to service intervals. You don't want to have, have it contaminated with 
water, for example, when you're doing water crossings, or if it's in the front of the vehicle, you don't want it contaminated by grease. What happens if the oil gets too thick, it can actually create enough resistance on the magnet to engage the cam, which engages the locker. And that's going to be to your detriment. You don't want that to happen. So the easiest way to break a diff center out of the housing, I find, is just chuck the diff on the front here when the axles are out of the center and the, the, all the bolts are done. Look at that. That's cracked. I see blokes in there sweating and cursing and carrying on. All right, now we just pull the center out. There we go. Let's get up on the vise. Righto, so let's go through and start with some of the basics, then I'll get into some of the more advanced stuff. How does the Harrop e-locker work? All right, very simple. It's an electronic locker, so that means that an electronic signal, when you turn the switch on, comes up these two wires here. And they go to this magnet. Now this magnet, just an electromagnet, is held in place by, from Harrop, by this stop here, which is welded to the magnet. I'm going to go into a bunch of information about that, and I'm going to explain this uh, dog's breakfast to you in due course. But let's just stick with how it works. So we send an electrical signal to the electromagnet in here, and then this magnet sucks itself onto this cam plate here. So in normal operation, when the diff lock's off, this is rotating with the differential carrier at, at basically wheel speed. They're just rotating together. We flick the locker on, and the magnet sucks itself to this and stops this cam plate from rotating. And then, see this pin here? There's four of these. There's one here and there's one down here. And so basically there's four of those around the carrier. This pin, when the cam plate stops, the carrier continues rotating, which forces this pin to ride up on on this cam here and it pushes the pin in this way and that down deep inside the differential is what engages a couple of dogs so that the axles are joined together and that's the guts of how the Harrop locker works so I'll run through it again just in, so you're really clear and understand this Electromagnet gets a signal. It sucks itself to the cam plate, stops the cam plate from rotating. The differential carrier is continuing to rotate and therefore it rotates in whichever direction and pushes these pins up into a position where they lock the locker into place, joining your axles together, giving you that locked differential that you want. So that's how the locker works. Let's have a chat about one of the perceived faults with the Harrop e-locker design, and that is where people are saying, because of this design up in here, the, um, there's, a, uh, there's a moment where you have an unlocked section of time between forward and reverse. So you're going forward, the, the locker's locked, and then it, you go to go reverse and it's unlocked and then it locks again. Does that happen? 100% it does. Um, not every time though. And I'm gonna show you some footage now where I can show you it actually happening, going from locked to unlocked. So you'll see in the footage, the Bundir is going forwards and we've got the locker engaged. I don't touch the locker switch th throughout this process. I just back up to have another go. And when I take off, you can see that the diff lock is not engaged and then it engages, and that's that slack moment. Now, what Harrop says, rightly so, is that for the majority of times, you will have sufficient cross axle wind up that the dogs inside here will stay locked. 90% of the time, that's exactly what happens. So um, the question I, well, what I think is, is it actually a problem 
for you when you're wheeling. Well, like I've said before, I reckon I'd be up there with somebody who wheels these lockers as hard as anybody else. Um, I mean, I just do so much wheeling and I do so much hardcore wheeling where I've got the lockers engaged and disengaged and all that. And I've just never ever had it be a problem for me. So I fail to see how it's an issue. To be honest, I think it's a storm in a teacup. You've probably seen the video that a friend of mine did, uh, which is um, Harrop versus ARB versus TJM Pro Lock or something like that. Anyway, it's a fairly common video that goes fairly well. And to be honest, I think it's a storm in a teacup. I wheel as hard as, uh, as um, Stefan does and um, with my vehicles, and I just don't have an issue with it. So he and I uh, will agree to disagree with that. Let's have a chat about the Achilles heel or what I've found in my case to be a problem with the Harrop e-locker. And it's to do with this part here. Now this is the Harrop designed stop that keeps the magnet uh, free to, to have a bit of wiggle and move and adjust to the cam plate when it's engaged and all of that. And also as you set up the differential, it allows all of these processes to happen. But the issue comes to the way it's secured to the magnet. And what happened in my case was this broke off. And it, it naturally it's gonna break off when you've got the differential engaged and it broke off and it stripped the wiring. See all this, this is all the harness being pulled, basically got pulled right up into the diff. All of this got pulled up through here and wrapped around until it busted the wires off. And you know, I had no, no locker working. Now I did a repair some time ago where I did the modification I'm about to show you and soldered this all back together. Now one of those solder joints broke on me and that's why I've got the center out today. And what I've done now is soldered it back together, put some heat shrink over the top of it. And then I've cable tied this, um, bit of stainless steel, which comes out of a, a windscreen wiper refill. Um, I've just cable tied that along the wire to up, up to this point here to try and give some backbone and support to that wire. Look, of course, the proper job is to go and get a, uh, a new magnet. But where's the fun in that, hey? Eh? Now, I want to show you over this side. Okay, here you go. This is where the ma that tab was m welded to the magnet previously. And as you can see, it's broken off. And so what I did was I got to thinking and I'm like, I, I, I want a better design than that. I, I think every time you go forward and backwards, there's a little bit of leverage added to this tab. Okay, and those welds fail over time because of that leverage. It goes this way, that way, every time and it's stopping, you know, it's, it's working hard. So I've created this device here. These are, uh, I think they're an M5 uh, bolt that I've um, just taken a bit of the, the steel. I've TIG welded that onto the magnet. Um, you've got to be very careful you don't overheat the magnet. So that's why TIG welding is the go. And uh, I TIG welded those onto there. Then I made this tab up here. Now that, sits in between those two blocks there, those two um, screw or bits of steel that I put on there, the tabs, whatever we're gonna call them, I don't know. <laughs> and then I've put at the back here, this stopper, and then welded that to the, um, to the tab the, or the lever or whatever, the stop that I made, and bolted it down. I just used a longer bolt here and reshaped the, the locking tab there. So I just made all of that work and this is probably done 15, 20,000 kilometers now. Oh, maybe more, I don't know, I'm totally guessing to be honest, but it looks exactly the way I put it back in the vehicle. It hasn't moved, so that's working. And I think that's a far more positive way of holding the magnet, yet ch achieving the same result. So aside from me having my wiring fail, that's, I'd almost do that on a new locker, to be honest. And yeah, that's going to void warranty and, you know, all of that. Well, you know, you buy good gear, you want the stuff to work, don't you? There's no point having a locker that lets you down out there in the bush, which this one's done twice now. 
purely because of that design and this wiring issue. So that's how I fix it. I think that's a really, well, it's working, put it that way. Let's just quickly touch on the gear set. It's a nice opportunity for me just to inspect the gear set and see how it's wearing. These are a nitro gear. I've found these, I've got quite a few of these gear sets in my fleet and I've found them to be very, very good. And so you know, I don't get any, I pay full full whack for the nitro gears. They don't give me any, any discounts or anything like that. Um, sometimes wonder if they even know that I like their gear sets. But anyway, um, the, 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 this gear set and gear differential center, I built the whole lot myself. I tend to do my own differentials these days and it's in perfect working order. 529 diff ratio, so that's why I can crawl it really nicely off-road and uh, it works great. It's dreadful on the freeway. Um, she, she's revving her, something's off, <laughs> but uh, absolutely great. No signs of wear no signs of wear the wear pattern that's there is right where it should be in the gear set so happy happy days i'm going to go and chuck that back in the car now and uh, go for a bit of a wheel but i hope that video has helped you understand a whole bunch about the 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 harrop e-locker i want to find out from you have i missed something have you learned something about these lockers uh, yourself have you got different opinions to myself um, just give us your comments, give us your thoughts, help us all learn so that we can all be out there wheeling well. All right, guys, I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.